Hi guys, this is Professor Stugard. I wanted to help you guys out with your homework this week on graphing quadratics by showing you a slightly easier way than the way that my math lab actually teaches. My math lab teaches a process called completing the square that is very useful, uh, particularly in upper level mathematics, but it's not necessarily necessary for what our purposes are going to be in this class. If you end up taking pre-calculus uh, later on down the road, you'll see completing the square again, uh, and you'll see some of its applications in higher level math. But to get through this course, is actually a much, much easier way. So I'm um, actually opened our own homework, uh, homework 21, graphing quadratics. And I'm gonna kind of walk you through the easier method for finding the vertex and for graphing. So at first up, let's find the vertex. So my method of finding the vertex is going to be kind of like the quadratic formula. We need to identify our coefficients. One thing I also want to mention is that, again, when we see that f of x notation, we really mean y equals, and then we have our big equation. So identifying our coefficients, we have uh, a is 2. That's the first coefficient. b is negative 12. That's going to be our coefficient or our number in front of x. And then c, that constant at the end is 16. To find the vertex, we start with the x-coordinate. And the x-coordinate, the formula is really, really simple. It's negative b over 2a. And since, again, we found our a was 2, our b was negative 12, and our c was 16, we plug those in, and we simplify. One thing I want to make a big note of as I make this video, when we are simplifying this, you must multiply 2 times a first. That has got to be the first step as we simplify. If you just type everything into your calculator, it's going to return the wrong value because your calculator is following its own order of operations and not necessarily what you want it to be doing. So again, we multiply two times a first, which is four, negative 12 divided by four is negative three, but the whole thing is negative. So negative, negative three is really positive three. So we find the X coordinate of our vertex is three. This value x equals three, the entire expression actually ends up being our line of symmetry, which you're going to need to enter a little bit later in the problem. So I'll make a note of that too. Now to find the y coordinate of our vertex, we take the answer we just found and plug it in. So we had x equals three. When we plug it back into the original equation everywhere we see it x, um, and then follow the order of operations, which means absolutely do that exponent first. We have to do three squared first, which gives us nine. Then multiply all those coefficients, do the adding and subtracting, and we get negative 2. If you want to double check my work, obviously pause the video and, and you can see what I'm doing. But um, again, hopefully this gives you the general idea. So now we have the following information. We have the x-coordinate and the, the y-coordinate of our vertex. So our vertex is the ordered pair and always an ordered pair. But it's the ordered pair 3 comma negative 2. The line of symmetry is x equals 3. And just note, you have to type in the entire expression x equals 3. You got to have to make it an equation when you type it in my math lab. And then that y value is actually our min and max that, is, that my math lab is also going to ask for. Now, we do have to determine whether or not it is a minimum or a maximum. And for that, we look at our first coefficient a. And again, a is 2, just like when we did the quadratic formula. If that, if that leading coefficient a is positive, then our value is a minimum. And had a been negative, we reverse it, and that value is a maximum. So you can see now I typed all those in and got my green check marks and my very supportive messages of nice work, and my vertex, my symmetry, and my minimum value. So now we have to worry about graphing the quadratics on my math lab. So the first thing we're going to need is the parabola tool. And all quadratics have a shape called a parabola. You can see I marked it there in red. When we grab the parabola, we're going to need two clicks, just like when we click a line. The first click has to be your vertex. And the second click should be the y-intercept. The y-intercept means we get rid of all the x's. And again, if we get rid of all the x's, and the mathematical thing is we let it be 0. But if we get rid of everything that has an x, the only thing that's left is the 16. Turns out that's also the value C we found earlier, and that's our y-intercept. So I graphed that using the tool, my first click being the vertex at 3, negative 2. The second click being my y-intercept, so my y-axis at 0, 16. And there we go. Excellent. And we're ready to move on to the next question. If you have any other questions, please send me an email, and I'll try to help you guys. Otherwise, I hope this was useful, and good luck.